Hello friends. Today in this session, we will discuss quality control in road construction. And this is part two of the series. And in this session, we will cover various quality control tests which should be performed while constructing granular layers of a flexible pavement that is sub base and base coats. And information for this video has been taken primarily from two books, Ministry of Rural Development Specification for Rural Roads 2014 and MORTH Specification 2013. Quality control of construction materials and finished product is essential requirement for obtaining improved and uniform standard of road construction. And road construction specifications and estimates provide basis for effective quality control. In addition, quality control goes hand in hand with cost control. When we provide advanced planning and set quality standards early on, we reduce the risk of making costly mistakes once construction begins. Focusing on quality control can also improve the safety of a project. Base and sub-base layers in a flexible payment form major part of the payment thickness and quality of these layers will certainly lead to long life and low maintenance cost of the payment. And there are several types of materials that can be used in sub-base or base course layers of payment as per specifications. It can be a granular sub-base or a lime treated sub-base or cement treated sub-base lime fly ash stabilized soil sub-base or cement treated sub-base or base. It can be used in both layers. Similarly, water bound macadam can be used as a sub-base layer or a base layer in case of low volume roads and wet mix macadam can also be used as sub-base layer or base layer. For ensuring the requisite quality of construction, the material and works should be checked for quality during construction and prior to construction. And Ministry of Road Transport and Highways specifications of 2013 and Ministry of Rural Development book of 2014 describe the test and frequency of test for different materials that should be conducted during construction. But one should remember that the testing frequency given in these specifications is the desirable minimum. And the engineer in charge of the project can increase the frequency of these tests if he feels it necessary to ensure the quality of construction. Now let us now discuss the requirement of each type of base course or sub base course layer. And the case one is when you provide the base or sub base of granular material. So it is granular base or sub base layer. And these are the type of test and frequency of test as specified in MORTH book of 2013 and in MORD book of 2014. So these tests are for National Highway, State Highway and MDR and ODR and these tests are for low volume roads. Gradation, utter bug limits that is liquid limit and plastic limit, moisture content prior to compaction, density of compacted layer, deleterious materials, in the aggregate and CBR. And this is the frequency of test. One test per 400 meter cube of aggregate or two tests per 500 meter cube of aggregate. Now, as far as grading is concerned, MORTH book of 2013 specifies six types of gradings. Grading three and grading four are generally used in the lower sub base layer and five and six when aggregate layer provides function of both drainage as well as sub base layer. The grading to be adopted will be as per contract document and grading should be checked during construction at the rate of one test per 400 meter cube of aggregate. And similarly, Ministry of Rural Development 2014 specify three types of gradings and these grading will also depend upon the type of layer to be provided. When naturally occurring gravel is specified for sub base, then it should conform to these gradings. And this grading too is generally used for surface course also. Now grading of aggregate should be checked 
by conducting two tests for every 500 meter cube of aggregate. And grading at site should conform to the one given in the contract document without any tolerance limit. Physical requirement of material for GSP layer, that is Gilner sub-base layer, as given in MORTH specifications, are like this. Aggregate impact value should be 40%, liquid limit 25%, plasticity index less than 6, and CBR at 90% dry density should be a minimum of 30%. Now, all these requirements are checked at the time, at the time of design of the mix for GSP layer. When Gunner subbase is provided with gravel in case of low volume roads, then the requirement as given in MORD specifications are based on the design traffic as well as climatic conditions. And these are the limits of liquid limit and plasticity index of the material passing 425 micron. So area having annual rainfall more than 1000 millimeter and design traffic up to 1 MSA. The liquid limit should be less than 35 and PI value should be less than 10. If the area has rainfall less than 1000 millimeter, then liquid limit can be up to 40% and PI value can be 15. And similarly, for all area irrespective of rainfall, it is specified as 25 or 6 and for design traffic of more than 1 MSA. When gravels are used in sub-base material, then wet impact value should be maximum of 50% and soft CBR at 100% dry density should be minimum of 20%. Now, these are the specifications given in MORD specifications for low volume roads. So, requirements are known at the start of the construction and these requirements are met by conducting tests at site during construction. The second test is the moisture content prior to compaction and frequency as given in MORTH 2013 for determination of moisture content at site is one test per 400 meter cube of construction and in case of rural roads it is two per 500 meter cube of construction. The moisture content of the mix should be checked as per IS 2720 part 2 and suitably adjusted so that at the time of compaction, it is 1 to 2 percent below optimum moisture content. It should be adjusted suitably for loss due to vaporization during transportation and mixing. The density of compaction should be checked at the rate of one test per thousand meter cube in case of high volume roads and one set for two thousand meter cube for low volume roads. And here one set basically forms the five to six measurements which, which are taken uniformly spread over the compacted layer. The density can be measured either by core cutting method or by sand replacement method depending upon the facility available at site. Now in case of low volume roads, MORD specifications permit use of soil aggregate mixture also for sub-base, base or even surface coarse layer. And it specifies grading for material for each application. However, the test and frequency of test for quality control remain same as given in this table. And rolling should be continued till the density achieved is at least 90% of proctor density determined wide IS2720 part 8, that is heavy compaction. And this is for national highway, state highway and expressways or it is 100% of proctor density as determined from light compaction, part 7. Now, case 2 is when the sub base is or base layer is made of stabilized material and this stabilization can be either through lime, cement or lime granular blast furnace slag or lime fly ash material material is used in the sub-base or even for improvement of subgrade. The type of test and the frequency which are specified in MORD 2014 are like this. The polarization of soil at least three tests daily and it is extremely important for the lime and cement stabilization of the 
soil. Placement moisture content at least three tests daily. In situ density measurement as per IS 2720 part 28 and that specify the core cutting as well as sand replacement method. And the test frequency is same as that is three tests on daily basis. The average of three tests shall not be less than the specified degree of compaction that is from your design and individual test value will not be less than 99% of specified degree of compaction. So density achieved at site should not be less than the lab density when you take average of three tests and individual test value should not be less than 99% of the specified density. Thickness of compacted layer should be checked randomly. The MORTH specifications provide little bit different guidelines for treated sub-base or improved sub-grade. Quality of lime or cement should be checked one test per each consignment. One test for each consignment and minimum one test per five tons of the material. Similarly, lime or cement content it should be checked regularly through procedural checks because after mixing it is very difficult to determine the quantity of lime or cement in the mix and therefore it is important to exercise this control during mixing itself. The quality of lime or cement as given in the contract and it should be checked that the Lime has purity of not less than 70% by weight of quick lime. Pulverization of soil periodically as required. CBR or unconfined compressive strength in case of stabilized base or sub base as per requirement. And it should the one set should make of three specimen placement moisture content one set for two tests per 500 meter square area. Density measurement one set for of two tests per 500 meter square area and thickness of compacted layer randomly. Now this pulverization of soil is important for lime stabilization. Efficiency of stabilization will depend upon the pulverization of soil and this is checked through grain size distribution. The requirement given in the code is that the material passing 26.5 millimeters should be 100% and passing 5.6 millimeter sieve size should be 80% and then you say that the pulverization of the soil is adequate. Determination of moisture content prior to compaction is important and it should neither be less than the OMC nor more than 2% above optimum moisture content. It should be checked as per IS 2720 part 2 and this code provides four methods to determine the moisture content at site. Oven drying method, sand bath method, alcohol method and rapid method with infrared lamp torsion balance moisture meter. Oven drying method is the most accurate method but if oven is not available at site then any of these three methods can be used. But alcohol method is considered to be the rapid determination of moisture content, but it is less accurate, but quite suitable for field test. The case three is when sub base or base layer is of WBM or WMM, water bound macadam or wet mix macadam. Now here as per MORTH 2013, these are the tests required to be conducted at site for WBM layer and for WMM layer. Aggregate impact value, grading value, combined fluckiness, elongation indices, atterberg limit of banding material in case of WBM or atterberg limit of material passing 425 millimeter in case of WMM. Atterberg limits of screening material in case of WBM and density of compacted layer in case of WMM. So these are the test frequencies. For impact value, one test per 1000 meter cube of aggregate in both cases. And grading one test for 500 meter cube of aggregate. Similarly, this combined fluckiness elongation indexes one test per 500 meter cube. 
and the utter work limit, liquid limit and plastic limit should be determined. For WBM material, it is one test per 50 meter cube of material and for WMM, one test per 200 meter cube of the material. For scaling material in case of WBM, one test per 100 meter cube. And similarly, density of compacted layer, one set of three tests per 500 meter cube. Now, these are the uh, quality control test and frequency as given in MORT specifications. MORT specifications slightly different. It co covers three types of layer, WBM, WMM and pressure run macadam also when it is provided as a sub base or base layer. And these are the test and frequency of test for different types of layers. Density of the layer can be determined either by core cutting method or by sand replacement method as per the facility available at site. And the requirement is that for high volume roads, the density of compacted layer should be at least 98% of proctor density as estimated through heavy compaction. Or in case of low volume roads, it should be 100% of proctor density as estimated using light compaction. The moisture content at site should not be less than OMC and it should not be more than 2% above optimum moisture content. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your suggestions or comments in the comment box.